Well, as Adam said, this is a bit of a teaser for this uh, afternoon session, and we want to just look at some of the challenges going forward. So maybe, Andy, I'll start with you. And you think about medicine and biomedicine. What do you think are some of the big challenges that we face? I mean, <clears throat> some of the challenges we face are learning more about how biology works, as, as Rich introduced it. We have to know how, from the quote from, from Paul Nurse, we have to understand it. Um, some of the questions are how to integrate all that knowledge. And, you know, tools of AI will be one of the sets of tools that could be useful there. But I think the other part of that equation is that we have to understand how the tools are providing us the knowledge. Yeah. And I, AI is notoriously bad at that. And so if there are future tools that allow us to know how they're working and what data sets they're coming from, that will be beneficial. And how do we make those kinds of approaches and that kinds of analysis sort of feasible for a human being with our sized brains to do. Um, the other thing I would point out is the, the great fascination with the human brain. It's much more interesting for all the young students there. The human brain is more interesting than any AI to study. And so I hope you'll, you'll use perhaps AI tools, but the questions that you may address were, will be how human brains work either individually or in groups. Right. You want to respond to that at all in terms of some of these complexities? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think, you know, using AI as a tool, especially AI for science issue, you know, how to, uh, it, it's really, you know, promising. And also, I think the, the data set you mentioned is really important because in the medical area, I think there's lots of includes not only like, you know, the, the research data, but also it includes like a privacy issues or the constant issues. So even though, you know, you know where the data came from, but it includes you know the privacy or the personal information then that is another you know, ethical concern so I think it's really very important and may it, it become more innovative but also we need to consider about the governance issues and the ethical issues as well so I might come back to some of the complexities of the brain in a bit but mm -hmm. if we stay on the theme of challenges ahead Ben what do you think from your perspective are some of the challenges with you know quantum science nano etc yeah for me, what is most fascinating about a living system is the complexity and the autonomous functions. Just to give you, I'm a molecular scientist, so we build molecules and materials, and we get a lot of inspiration from Mother Nature. And let's look at one of the big challenges yeah, that we face, how to recycle our materials to make a better sustainable world, because we use a lot. Yeah? We throw away plastic instead of reusing it. Now, one of the challenges is how to make a strong material that can hold this water, like this bottle or this material, but also to recycle it on command. This is what your body does. Mm -hmm. I learned from my friends in biology, but my colleague here can comment, that almost half of your body weight is recycled every day. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, half your body weight is recycled every day? We are not smart enough. We don't know how to recycle our plastic properly, only a few exceptions. We have to learn this and we have to look at Mother Nature and understand the complexity and the dynamic functions of Mother Nature. And then we will be able to make our sustainable future. Just one example. Uh, do you want to comment on autophagy? It's a very uh, interesting uh, issue here. We have a Nobel laureate who is Japanese, Oshimi, <laughs> who received the prize for that. And you say he solved all of this for us. Oh, the, our friends in biology, they know a lot about life, and we look at them all the time and get inspiration, you know, and then translate it into artificial systems, of course, because an airplane is not a bird, eh? Looks like it, though. Yeah, but it does not <laughs> fly like this, you know. Yeah. So, so, so this is why we need to work together. And so we need to, to understand the human yes. machine before we can... Understand and translate into new possibilities for the future. Yeah, it's taken a few billion years to yeah. evolve all the systems to do that. but I don't have a billion years. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I mean, there, we, we'll, we'll, we'll figure some of those things out, but they're, they're, they're going to be challenging and interesting questions that, that, that are out there for, again, for the next generation to, mm -hmm. to solve. How do, we, how do we work with our environment in a way that's sustainable? And one of them is going to be recycling and reuse. Um, Right. And learning from biology is good, and maybe using biology along the lines. Sure, sure. sure. But if that's a whole bunch of bacteria instead of a bottle, and you drink it, and then you make the bacteria reorganize themselves into a, you know, a desk chair or a book, that would be great. Uh, Akira, you want to jump in? Any uh, thoughts from your perspective on the challenges here? Uh, I'm, 
uh, I'm working on quantum computing, and uh, the a big challenge for us is to reduce energy consumption of quantum computer and also AI. Uh, at the moment, uh, everything is digital. Uh, digital consumes uh, a lot of energy. Uh, but uh, human brain, or just brain, uh, uh, analog computer without error correction. And uh, the energy consumption is really, really low. For example, uh, in the case of digital computer, hmm. uh, for recognition of cat and dog, you need nuclear plant, right? Uh, but in the case of uh, analog computer or a brain, uh, the energy consumption is less than one piece of onigiri uh, uh, rice ball. So uh, we should go to analog computing. And uh, uh, quantum computers are inherently analog computers because uh, we have to handle superpositions. So uh, in that sense, uh, we should uh, stick to analog computing uh, with our quantum computer. Any thoughts around that? Big challenges? We can do a quick lightning round. What do you think the biggest challenge is? Um, yeah, so I, I think uh, the, the issue is how how we wanted to, uh, you know, uh, un you know, the, in the previous session, like we wanted to understand human being, or you know, how we can live, you know, society in a very sustainable way. And I think AI, genomics, quantum, uh, all those technologies are. Uh, we, we need to think, consider it as a tool, but also we can also learn from you know uh, our, our human bodies and uh, uh, how we can effectively use it. And uh, but in, in that sense, uh, we can use it in more, more innovative way. But uh, I am oh, sorry to introduce later. But uh, my 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 specialist is in the social science. So I I really um, uh, uh, respect all those you know new technology and new development innovation. Uh, it it makes our society much more effective, much more better one. But also, we also need to think about its ethical, you know, legal, social, con you know, considerations of the impact. And I think the challenge is, is how we can collaborate together with, you know, social scientists, uh, engineers, so, uh, you know, uh, or the, the scientists. So uh, th th those is, you know, maybe the audience might think, you know, you are the researchers or you, you are the you know the the professors so you you can you know collaborate it but i think you know the the even though we are using the same term like ai genomics what we think or maybe human beings what we think is slightly different or maybe totally different so i think this kind of conversation is really important and that might be you know the basic challenges that we face so i really appreciate you know what 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 is the uh, you know, uh, the very important topics of each areas and how we can collaborate or maybe would like to ask you all. So how are you collaborating with the other fields? And that would be the hint for our futures. I can think in, at least in the medical field, we're thinking a lot about what makes us human and we're trying to understand the human genome. And then we're trying to understand how we can maybe potentially make us better through medicines or genetics. There's also the ethical issue there as well. And I, I know those fields talk a lot, but I don't know if you want to comment on that. Are we going to be able to CRISPR in the right genes once we know what they are? I, I think our biggest challenges are social, actually. How do we generate a group of people that can, can meet a common goal? And you know, one of the models for that, which works very well, is the orchestra, you know, a benevolent orchestra with a director in front and conducting, and people are working together, playing different instruments with different, and making wonderful music. And then, Really, the, the best example I saw was the drumming group that just was on stage. They seem to be working to me without a director. Everybody seemed to be working together perfectly in making music and making, making art. That was tremendous. I think we should understand the neurobiology and social biology of that group, and we'd be a long distance further than we are now. 
All right, so that brings in a point that she made up about having different points of view around the table to solve a question, and you would want the drummer there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would want the drummer there, and the conductor to understand how they work, and the, and the back stand of the violin section to understand how they work, too. Ben, you've solved big, complex problems. What's your perspective on oh, this? But I, I fully agree. I think there is a crucial role for the universities that we train our students to look also about cross disciplines because it's very difficult to predict what will be the next big development. Did you predict that we would have smartphones which completely change the way we communicate no. and One, run point. our societies? This is with all the influences and so. This is also a big social and communication problem, et cetera. And so maybe nobody had predicted that. At an early stage, maybe at universities, we should recognize and discuss with our colleagues in other disciplines and train our students you know, to ask the right questions and so, and be prepared for their role in society. So I'm a strong advocate of this kind of things. Yeah, I think that's great. I remember my father, when I was young, telling me, he said, you know, Jules, one day you're going to be buying things from a computer. And I was like, Dad, that's never going to happen. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. He surely knew. We did, we, yeah. you know, so you, you have it, to have this idea to be dreaming, right? right? Yeah. Imagine to live without the smartphone. I'm oh. sure when I asked the question here, nobody would can imagine that we had The this. thing is, probably one day we won't have that. We'll have yeah. something else, right. something bigger than and that. There will be other things in the future. Yeah. Exactly. Talking about robots. Yeah, for, for my case, uh, I started to talk to brain science people. Uh, as I said, uh, in brain, uh, brain is analog computer without uh, error correction. And uh, the system is just a linear operation and plus some nonlinear operation. That's it. Uh, so I really uh, uh, build such type of quantum computer uh, because, uh, again, uh, it is analog computer. And also, uh, we can uh, make a program for it. So it is controllable. Uh, so uh, uh, like his uh, high opinion, uh, it is very important to uh, talk uh, between different type of people and uh, to have a new knowledge. Uh, for us, especially uh, talking with uh, brain science people is really crucial. I also have one question that, or maybe I uh, no, also would like to ask you, so you, or maybe your father. So where we get this kind of future visionary so, you know, it's one of the things is that maybe we can talk with the other discipline and maybe we can have, you know, the very different images or maybe, you know, future perspectives. But we are talking about, you know, the future society today. So I was just wondering, so is it like a, you know, sci-fi thing or maybe or science fiction? So her question is, where do the visionaries come from? Yeah. And, so. and are they born or are they created or how yeah. do you cultivate yeah, that? Any thoughts from, around that? Yeah. Because, you know, you talked about the conductor, right? So yeah. if you got the wrong conductor, <laughs> you could really have a mess. Yeah. So uh, how do you how do you promote that mm -hmm. the, the visionary yeah. aspects? Oh, yeah. The visionaries come from are born. They're human beings, and they go to the library and they read science fiction, <laughs> <laughs> and they learn what people have dreamt, and they start dreaming of their own dreams. And I think that's part of where that comes so from. So you think the the imagination of yeah. you know the other field or that the people's imagination is really you know inspiring your research. I, I, yeah. If I may comment on that, I yeah. fully agree. I think this imagination and creativity of the young people is, is the most crucial aspect here, you know? And, and there is a lot of talk about robots, you know, and artificial intelligence and so. I'm not in this area, you know, but we build materials. And what I'm really interested in is to make hybrid systems. So not so much to create a robot, and if a robot, as Richard mentioned, can, can have emotions or feelings or whatever, but what will happen, you know, when we implant chips in your brain, when we get more understanding of our brain functions? And I recently heard this lecture about a visionaire, yeah? And that was really intriguing. We find it normal that you get a hip implant when you are older and you don't walk properly, or you get a pacemaker or whatever. But to get a chip in your brain to help you a little bit to remember names <laughs> or to help you, you know, when with all kinds of disabled functions. But then he said, imagine, with all these functions, you know, and this integration, 
they can download your brain content on the internet. So where are you then, in the cloud or in your body? So this is a kind of vision for the tukums that we should, for the future, sorry, but that we should also discuss about this potential, you know? Mm -hmm. Not only about robots, but about the human electronic interface, for instance, or human robotics interface, all these kind of things. What? Are we hybrid systems in the future? Where are we then? Yeah? I don't have the crystal ball. Now, you guys are, you're, you're the... You, are we in the cloud? Yeah. <laughs> Some people may, you know, think that is very, you know, um, you know, utopian view, but you yeah. know, some people may see, you know, think of the dystopian world. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, I, we, well, I think we talked a little bit about the ethical, cha you know, yeah. considering the ethics sure. as well. And I want to end on that. We have just a few minutes left, so we have the challenges, um, the challenges to understand our brains and try to understand how to improve human health is really important, and then trying to co cohabitate in a world where clearly in front of us we see a lot of technologies. And sometimes that's blurry, sometimes not. But where will the ethics you know, be on this as well moving forward? Ben, maybe some thoughts, because you, you raised it with downloading oh, no, the brain. I, I think it is crucial that we discuss also about ethics aspects in an early stage. Maybe if we had done that, but I'm not so much in the genomics area, but if we had done this for genomics a little bit earlier maybe, that the universities were advocating this to contact with our other di other disciplines in the universities that the natural scientists, you know, also were much more involved in what are potential ethics aspects. I think it's important because then bringing the message to the general public and to our politicians and tell them, look, this is pros and contras. This is something we should discuss about and build then your decisions as politics on facts and not on fiction or opinions, you know, that is my, I think that is our role, I think, as well, Clearly with the embryonic stem cells, ethics has been a really big part of that discussion yeah, as well. But, but even just making recombinant proteins was a big debate yeah. on whether or not you could bioengineer insulin production and, and what would that mean? Anything from your point of view in terms of ethics related to the medical field? I mean, I think you get a lot of people with knowledge around a table and you start to find out what people's concerns and, and values are. I and mean, to me, you know, one of the concerns is sort of the do no harm part of it. We don't want to do any harm with the science that we do. And another concern is that any kind of manipulation of the environment as a human environment should support human diversity. That's a very important part of it. And if, if we're in that realm, we're actually, I think, being, being, creating a better world if we can do that. If we're not doing that, we're probably not creating a better world. Okay, great. And, and there's also this aspect, you know, that we should go out outreach like we do here now, but advocate to the general public, you know, what the potential risks are. I still, I vividly remember what I read about Henry Ford. People said, you know, about these cars that looked very dangerous when he built the first car. Mm -hmm. And Henry Ford said, if I would have asked what I should have done, I should have breeded faster horses instead of building a car faster horses for our carriages, mm -hmm. then we would not have cars. And the same with airplanes. When the Bright, Bright brothers were flying for the first time, you know what the people said? If God wanted us to fly, they would have given us wings mm -hmm. to fly. So yeah. these are the visionaries. So yeah, so we have to think about these ethical aspects and how it would, yes. Mm -hmm. And what are the real risks? It's difficult to say. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna wind up, but I think messages that we need to reflect on are certainly diversity is important, uh, cultivating the creative mind, allowing people to have what we might consider to be some crazy ideas <laughs> because we need the visionaries and then being in a, a world where we do have a dialogue and consider the ethical impact and how this might affect us in terms of sustainability. A lot of these things we're gonna talk about in the breakout mm -hmm. sessions, but thank you so much for your interactions this morning. And um, I think it's time for lunch. Oh, all right. Ooh. Or maybe it's time for Adam, we'll <laughs> see. But thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.